Okay, in this video, we are doing Calc AB problem set number 101. The problems and a playlist are in the description below. Let's get started. So given that f of x equals the cosine of pi over 4x, uh, we want to solve f of x is greater than 0 on 0 to 16. So you're going to see this part, th this type of problem within other problems. It's not really like a calculus problem, but sometimes you have to figure out where something is positive or negative. So that's why we're doing this. So the period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, b is pi over 4. So that's going to be 8, uh, which makes an increment of the graph, the period divided by 4, which is 2. Um, and so I'm going to set up my grid. So 8 and 16, because we're doing two full periods, because the period's 8, and we have to go from 0 to 16. Um, so I've got it set up, and then I just, you know, you go maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. That was hard to say. And then uh, a curve. This is not, like, the best graph that you could make but you don't need it to be the best graph. You just need it to show you where this thing is positive, which means you are above the x-axis. So uh, if we're gonna be above the x-axis, that's gonna be from zero to two, including zero. Um, and then from six to 10, not including either of them because uh, f is zero at six and at 10. And then from 14 to 16, including 16. So you don't include where it is zero because we're just doing greater than. Greater than or equal to, we would have included all of them. All right, tangent uh, to f of x at x equals seven. So to do that, we're gonna need to know what um, f of seven is. So f of seven is the cosine of seven pi over four, which is in the fourth quadrant, so it's positive, so root two over two. We're gonna need to know the derivative, so f prime. Uh, don't forget the chain rule, so it's gonna be negative pi over four sine pi over four x. We have to evaluate this at seven, um, so f prime of seven is gonna be negative pi over four. And then the sine of uh, seven pi over four, seven pi over four is a uh, fourth quadrant, sine is negative. So it's gonna be negative root two over two times negative pi over four. So positive pi root two over eight. And then our tangent line in point slope form is y minus root two equals pi root two over eight quantity x minus seven. All right, let's look at the next part. Find the average rate of change of f of x on 0 to 16. And then the next part is to find the average value. And after I wrote this and started writing the answers up, I realized, like, I don't know. Is this a bad question? Not really. But, uh, you know, average rate of change is uh, algebra 1 slope. So f of 16 minus f of 0 over 16 minus 0. But then that's going to give us the cosine of 4 pi minus the cosine of 0 over 16 minus zero. And at this point I was like, uh, this is just zero because uh, cosine of four pi is the same as the cosine of two pi is the same as the cosine of zero. They're both one. So we get one minus one over 16. So we're getting zero as our answer. And then I was like, you know, remember the graph that we made that started at a maximum and ended at a maximum? <laughs> like obviously this was gonna be zero. And you can also just think of the pattern, right? We went maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum, start and stop at a maximum you're definitely getting zero as your average rate of change there. Not like a terrible question, because we still have to do it, but eh, I don't know. And then average value has like basically the same problem. Average value is going to be the integral uh, divided by the interval. So we're going from zero to 16 of our function, and then we're gonna divide by 16 minus zero. So integral divided by interval. Never forget that. It's like a, a helpful little, uh, it's not a mnemonic, it's just like what it is. Uh, so this is gonna be, 1 over 16. I see a lot of people forget that. Um, and then, uh, so there would have been a, there should have been a pi over 4 on the inside. So there's a 4 over pi on the outside. And then we'll get a sine of pi over 4x. And we're going to go from uh, 0 to 16. This answer is also going to be 0 because we're going to end up with uh, 1 over 4 pi. And then you get the sine of 4 pi minus the sine of 0. But the sine of 4 pi and the sine of 0 are both 0. So we're just getting 0 again. Uh, and then after I did this, I thought to myself, like, oh, yeah, I mean, that's, like, kind of obvious, I guess, because if we, like, look at the graph, which we created on the uh, previous problem, but, you know, you get these, you get, like, two full, I don't know, like, half periods below the curve, below the x-axis, rather, and then you get, like, two disjointed but full uh, half periods above, so obviously it's going to be zero. So we could have thought of it graphically and answered that faster, is kind of my point. All right, next. If f of x is the integral from 3 to x cubed of arctan of t squared dt, we want to find f double prime of 1. 
okay, so we're gonna find f prime using second fundamental theorem. So f prime, we take the upper bound, which is x cubed, and we replace every t that we see on the inner, the integrand, I guess, um, with x cubed. So first up, we got arctan of, it's gonna be x cubed squared, which is x to the sixth, times the derivative of the upper bound, so times three x squared. That's f prime, but we need f double prime. So f double prime is gonna be a um, product rule, right? Because uh, it's a product. So we're gonna get first, derivative of the second is six x, plus second, which is three x squared, derivative of the first. So this is the derivative of arctan with a chain rule involved. So it's gonna be, um, it's one over one plus u squared times the derivative of u. So it's one over one plus x to the six squared. So one over one plus x to the 12th times the derivative of x to the 12th, which is, nope, sorry, times the derivative of x to the sixth. So that's times six x to the fifth. Then we gotta plug in one. So uh, f double prime of one, you don't have to watch that. R10 of one times six plus three times six over one plus one. So that's uh, six arc 10 of one. The arc 10 of one is pi over four. So six times pi over four plus 18 over two, which is nine. So we get this. And then ultimately we get three pi over two plus nine. All right, let's take a look at the next one, which has two of our favorite repeating uh, integrals here. We got uh, the integral from negative four to eight of the absolute value of x minus three over x minus three. You should handle this one by creating the graph. And you should definitely know this. I mean, I put this on a lot of the problem sets. At most, this would be one multiple choice question, but it's like such a free multiple choice question on the AP exam that it is not worth getting it wrong. Um, so we have that, we, we see our region, so we're doing negative seven plus five, which is obviously negative two. Um, so always handle that one that way. That's why it's on the problem set so often. The second one is arctan here, and also I don't like the formatting because why is it over so far? It's because I forgot to left justify it. That's why. All right, that 25 is a problem because it should be a one. So I'm gonna factor one over 25 out. So I'm taking 25 out of the denominator. Um, and that'll leave me with this. Then because I'm thinking this is arctan, that should be one over one plus u squared. So I'm gonna turn it into something squared. One over 25, the integral of one over one plus the quantity seven x over five squared. And then because of that, there should be a seven over five from the chain rule in the numerator, which means there would be a five over seven on the outside to balance that out. That's just multiplying by one. Five over seven times one over 25 is one over 35. And then we have a perfect arctan of u, which is seven x over five, and then plus c. All right, that's the entire problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.